class, we did not get to go over partitioning matrices, so I wanted to make this short video that talks a little bit about um, what they are and how the idea is useful and how to multiply them. Um, so here I have two matrices. Um, one is a food matrix. Uh, notice that along the top I have different foods, hamburger, chicken, apple, orange. Along the left-hand side I have the labels for each row. Uh, this is the amount of cholesterols and cholesterol in milligrams, sodium in milligrams, vitamin E in milligrams, fiber in grams, beta carotene in micrograms, and vitamin C in micrograms. And it looks like there's a natural structure to this, the way we have the rows ordered. Um, like it looks like there are some things, um, some things up here, for example, that just don't show up in fruits. And there's some things down here that just don't seem to show up in meats. Um, and there's something that things in the middle that show up in both. Okay. Um, but this suggests a kind of partitioning that um, that we could do. I'm going to erase those. Oops. It seems like we could we could partition this like this to give us six different sections. And that gives us two sections where they are all zero. And that's going to help us later on when you do this multiplication. Okay, over here we have servings um, for four different people, Alice, Bob, Charlie, and Diane. It's their servings for hamburger, chicken, apples and oranges okay so these are the meats and these are the fruits okay um, and again we have a natural partition so Charlie and Diane are vegetarians so Charlie and Diane have no servings with the meats um, so we get a section that's all zeros um, now so Sometimes you get variables or cases where you can easily uh, partition them and you get sections that are all zeros or the identity or um, at least they're sparse. Sparse means you have lots of zeros in there. And those make it very easy to do multiplications. Uh, even for the computers, it makes it a lot, a lot easier. Um, and the, re the reason we like the partition is because then we can break it up into smaller smaller matrices to do the multiplication and a lot of those products we all already know will be zero um, so I could rewrite this matrix on the left as food one food two food three food four food five food six okay so if you wanted to See those, this would be food six, this would be food, oops, that's food five. Five, this section is food one, this is food two, food four, food six. And similarly, we could write out the matrix over here uh, with the person slash serving matrix. We could write it as serving matrix one, serving matrix two, serving matrix three, and serving matrix four. Um, the book uses double uh, double indices. Um, I think it's easier just to write down a single index. Um, so when, if we want to multiply these two matrices up at the top, if we want to multiply those, then we can do it by multiplying these matrices where these blocks are represented by uh, Fs and Ss. So we could actually write out that uh, that made that the resulting matrix, if we just went rows and columns in the top, should be the same as taking F1 times S1 plus F2 times S3. Okay, so those are our first, that's our first row times column. We can take our first row times our uh, second column 
and we'd have f1 s2 plus f2 s4 and um, what I'm I'm putting this in a matrix form it's going to look like it's going to be three by two because I have three rows three rows here two rows here two columns here um, I'll have a three by two structure but each of those cells in the three by two are actually a matrix in this section right here in this section I'm going to get a matrix that is um, well the size of f1 times s1 that's going to be a two by two times a two by two and f2 is a two by two and it's multiplied by a two by two so I do have to check and make sure that these sizes make sense um, so and they do so this is going to be a two by two when it's all done that product and and similarly this is going to end up being a two by two we can tell from the beginning what we're going to end up with we better end up with a uh, this is it's a six by four multiplied by a um, four by four so we can check that yep the number of columns is the same as the number of rows so we can do the multiplication and we will end up with a six by four so we're going to end up with a six by four so we're going to have six six rows here four columns here okay um, so here these each of these cases are going to be a two by two when I do this next product um, so if I take the f3 f4 times s1 s3 um, f3 times s1 plus f4 times s3 I mean I have a a 1 by 2 multiplied by a 2 by 2 so that's going to get me a 2 by 1 oops a 1 by a 1 by 2 and um, that's going to be the size there then f3 f4 multiplied by this column so I'm going to have f3 f3 times s2 plus f4 times s4 and that will also end up being I have a I have a 1 by 2 and I'm multiplying it by um, as f4 is a 1 by 2 and s2 is a 2 by 2 s4 is a 2 by 2 so uh, f4 times um, f4 times s4 is going to get me a another 1 by 2 and so I have a 1 f3 times s2 is a 1 by 2 f4 times s4 is a 1 by 2 so I can add those together so that's a 1 by 2 and we can finish with the last ones I do uh, this multiplication here and then this multiplication here to so put in my last two cells and so we get f5 times s1 plus f6 times s3 and then um, f5 times s2 plus f6 times s4 should have made my matrix bigger yeah. um, and the sizes of those I'm multiplying both of these are three by twos they're multiplied by twos by twos they're going to end up with three by two sizes three by two three by two and you'll notice since I, I have one row one row or two rows one row three rows I'm going to end up with six rows and um, since I have two columns, two columns, I have two columns on all, all of these, I'm going to end up with four columns across. So sizes work out. But here's the nice thing is I, anything multiplied by S2 
is going to be zero because it's a zero matrix. So that's a that's zero, that's zero, that's zero. Anything multiplied by F2 is going to be the zero matrix. So um, I think that should be uh, F2. F2, yeah, so, so that's zero, that's zero. Anything multiplied by um, F5, so that's going to be zero, and that's zero. So all of those products um, are going to be zero. We have, uh, what, 12 total? Half of those are going to be zero. Very nice. Um, so we just have to focus on finding the other ones and adding them up. And this makes sense. Like this whole this whole section here is going to be um, zero because that is the um, so the F one times the S two F one times the S two. So that's yeah. Uh, it's the vegetarians. They aren't eating any hamburger and chicken, and it also has the F2, the apples and oranges. They don't have any of the animal products. So these, these turn out to be things from that animals produce. And these turn out to be things that plants produce, at least in our sample. So they have animal products and plant products, some that are by both. So. Um, so this whole section right here is going to be zero because you're, they're not eating any of the they're not eating any of the the meat because they're vegeta they're, they're um, vegetarians and these people aren't getting any of the uh, the animal products because they're just eating uh, apples and oranges. So that's what those two products in there represent. So. Um, so we won't go through and multiply out the whole th the whole thing. Uh, you should be able to do that, um, but it gives you hopefully helps you understand how the partitioning of matrices makes sense when you're in in a context, and how you can it can simplify the prop the product. We there are some phrases uh, like the matrix column representation and the row matrix representation and the outer product expansion. I don't think you have to know those uh, for this for this um, course, um, but you should know how to partition and you should know how to multiply partitioned matrices. So, okay, thanks.